Good morning, everybody. Thank you uh, for your presence uh, this morning. Uh, the, the, the topic for today is uh, on development and financing. And uh, perhaps if it's OK with my co-panelists, uh, uh, should we just do a quick uh, round of introductions, or would you just want to? So, so maybe we can start with introductions. Uh, uh, very good morning, all of you. Uh, my name is Rahul Dasri, uh, and I represent Sunshot Technologies. Uh, we set up uh, rooftop solar power plants for industrial and uh, commercial electricity consumers under various uh, financing models. And uh, apart from that, uh, we also focus uh, big time on uh, operation and maintenance and our cloud-based uh, IoT platform, uh, by which we are giving an energy management dashboard uh, to various customers and stakeholders. Um, hello everyone, I'm Ravi Kumar. Uh, I represent a company called Dexler Energy. Uh, we uh, focus on uh, supplying power to consumers, uh, commercial and industrial consumers, uh, uh, both on the uh, on-site generation as well as uh, on a solar farm basis. Uh, we also do under the roof solutions. We provide energy efficiency. We do some amount of energy analytics and uh, IoT based uh, technologies, uh, completely on energy efficiency, not on solar. Thanks. Hi, uh, everyone. This is Shirishnath Banerjee. I'm from uh, Tata Cleantech Capital. Uh, we finance uh, projects, uh, both uh, solar, wind, um, and also um, distributed generation to a large extent. And uh, of course, so a lot of you might be uh, aware of Tata Cleantech already, uh, but we are a joint venture between Tata Capital and uh, IFC Washington. And uh, I see a lot of familiar faces, and uh, we have already done a lot of business with many of you guys. Happy to be here. Hi everybody, I'm Setu Goel and I uh, represent Cleantech Solar, which is a Singaporean fund and uh, we are an IPP, that is we invest, own and op operate uh, solar assets across Asia and we are present in both uh, rooftop segment as well as open access. Thanks. Morning everyone, my name is uh, Vivek Subramanian. I'm the founder of a company called Fourth Partner Energy. Uh, we were set up in 2010 in Hyderabad. Uh, we have now nine offices span India. Uh, we do only distributed solar uh, or rooftop solar. Uh, we primarily focus on industrial commercial India, um, including uh, assets under implementation. We are currently around 50 megawatts or so assets under implementation plus what we've installed till date. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Ritu Lal, and the company is uh, Ampla Solar. We are also a distributed solar uh, IPP. Uh, whereby we uh, own the assets and work on the solar power as a service model. And uh, we are uh, present across 20 states in India. Our assets are across 20 states in India. And we're currently sitting at about an executed portfolio of 60 megawatts and about 65 megawatts of portfolio, which is under construction. Thank you. Thank you, Ritu. Uh, I'm Srishti. I'm a part of uh, Ernst & Young's uh, energy M&A and fundraising practice. Uh, we've been uh, recently advising a lot of clients to raise capital uh, for renewable energy. Uh, for example, uh, you know, you as entrepreneurs, as developers are facing uh, in project development. So, uh, you know, we have a good mix of developers and finances in this panel, and maybe we can start with some of those issues. Uh, Rahul, would you like to uh, first explain what are the typical issues that you see on the ground and how, how is the market changing? Um, so, Srishti, say, uh, from a developer perspective, uh, what we're seeing is that even now, with so much proliferation of rooftop solar, uh, the time that is being taken to kind of uh, close a lead is still, is still quite long uh, uh, for, for, multiple, uh, for multiple reasons. Apart from that, the other challenges that we see uh, is also on the regulatory front. Though most of the states have come up with their uh, renewable energy policy with respect to taxation, cross subsidies, etc., uh, they've also, uh, you know, announced net metering, and net metering is quite crit critical for distributed solar. But uh, on the ground implementation, you know, across the state is tough. I mean, some states are less bad, and some states are, you know, real bad. So that really impacts, uh, you know, the kind of capacity that we are able to uh, install. Uh, apart from that. You also have issues of structural challenges because unlike a solar farm, 
where at the end of the day, you're putting a solar plant on land and evacuating in the grid. Uh, in the case of rooftop, each roof is different from a structural strength civil perspective. So you have to go roof by roof, uh, ensure that they can take the load for a very long uh, uh, period, and you know then go about uh, you know installing solar. Uh, so that's one. And constantly uh, we get compared with the tariffs which are going around on the large uh, solar farms uh, size, uh, like what happened at Reva and Bhadla, and uh, it takes. Uh, quite some effort to explain to customers that it's very really, uh, it's apple and oranges. You have those rates coming on the wholesale side, where each uh, ultra megawatt solar uh, uh, farm is of 250 megawatt, and here we are talking about 250 kilowatt, uh, 500 kilowatt. On the on the capex side, where you know uh, typically a customer himself puts a solar plant on his roofs and consumes it, there uh, though many projects have happened, but I feel that the debt market has not you know, kind of picked up the way it should have. Say, for example, on the housing finance side or say on uh, commercial finance side. Uh, yes, there are a lot of initiatives in the market driven by IFC, Tata Clean Tech Capital is one of them. But what we're seeing in the market is that still lenders are a bit wary about the technology, whether it will last for 25 years, what happens if the customer defaults, what do I do with the asset, there's no second-hand market. And there is an issue with respect to ticket size. So whether you're doing a due diligence of a 10, 15 million deal, or whether you're doing a due diligence of a one crore deal, the effort that is required is, you know, uh, quite similar. So these all things have kind of, you know, not allowed rooftop to scale the way it has been, say, envisioned in the so-called 100 gigawatt, gigawatt roadmap of India. So you've seen ground mounted really, you know, uh, you know, taking off in a big way. The ratio should have been two is to three, but we are at around one is to 10. So these are a few of the challenges that, uh, you know, we encounter on a daily basis. Right. And, uh, you know, you mentioned about how states are very different and how regulatory issues is one of the big issues. Uh, Ritu, what are your views? Because Amplus has a portfolio spread across states. Uh, how do you think states are panning out and are they trying to catch up or are they just very comfortable? So the story is completely varied. There is uh, There are states like Karnataka, which so far have the most... Uh, uh, RESCO friendly policies and solar friendly policies and uh, if we were to raise our hands I think all of us have open access projects in Karnataka and only in Karnataka so if when we say we have open access we have open access only in Karnataka today we're trying to work with other governments we're trying to work with Punjab in terms of policy MP in terms of policy uh, but so far not happened even the rooftop policy in Karnataka is uh, liberal compared to many other states. There are states like Maharashtra, which have a very good net metering policy on paper, but the ground level reality is it's extremely challenging to get that implemented because there's a lot of resistance from the discoms. And as um, companies that work only ethically, it becomes even more challenging and time consuming. Then there are states like uh, Gujarat, where the policy looks like they allow, forget net metering, they allow third party owned rooftop plants. Yeah. But the reality is we signed two PPAs after in one case 18 months of discussion, in both cases actually. And luckily before we started implementing, when we started figuring out how to go about it, we discovered that it required approval from GEDA who said go and get approval from DISCOM and the DISCOM wasn't willing to do it. And finally, we had to kind of walk out of the PPA. And so there is a lot of restriction. Then the states like Haryana, where they said that we want to experiment with solar and we want to go solar, but we are very scared about the grid imbalance. Today, we are not even at 5% penetration of the grid in Haryana. It says, no, no, if we have more rooftop, larger rooftop plants, the grid might get imbalanced. So we are not even, I mean, this is an informal discussion. We don't even want something bigger than 50 kilowatts on a rooftop. So even within the regulatory authorities, there is a lot of lack of awareness. Uh, there are issues, of course, I mean, when, I, when we say discoms and their financial position and their sometimes perceived and sometimes real issues relating to, uh, you know, their financial stability, because the first thing if you talk to a discom, there's like you're taking away the cream business from the cream clients. So obviously there is going to be a resistance. So it looks like we are working at cross purposes there, whereas we are not actually working at cross purposes. 
so this is where the regulators can you know probably take more of a leadership position and bring different stakeholders together find out the real issues and help people overcome those issues you know if the discoms have a real issue then it's for the regulator to step in and somehow figure out a way that kind of protects the discoms interests protects the government's interest in prote in promoting solar and the developers interest in helping us grow and uh, and what are the views of the panel on uh, you know the openness of uh, uh, customers to energy solutions because that also creates uh, uh, you know a new market uh, for for this uh, for rooftop and solar in general so ravi maybe you can give your views on this because you were mentioning about energy solutions uh, there is a significant interest a um, lot of consumers are uh, willing to do this uh, particularly in a, under the resco model it takes away the capital cost technology risks and the operation and maintenance risk uh for them it is as a as a as a solution as an option it is very lucrative and they immediately jump at it to start with but then when we open up and we talk about having long term contracts uh asking them to uh say, share some some of the risks or uh, uh let's say uh, when we are looking at uh, doing a diligence on them there is there is there there you will see lot lot of resistance that is coming up uh but the larger um uh, larger uh, if you see the mood of the customers there is a significant interest and uh, right now uh, take any state any state for that matter and particularly in the cni segment uh, across the people who are sitting here uh, there would be there would probably be a one gigawatt of conversations that are going on just sit just those people who are sitting here only on the rooftop side and uh, that's the kind of uh, uh, interest that's kind of uh, conversations that are going on but uh, only a small amount of it is getting converted because of the issues that i'm talking about uh, particularly contractual in nature uh, and understanding about the solution as such they they all think that you know usme kya hai you know put a panel and wo generate karega what is it that you are talking about in terms of its uh, security or its operation or it's about uh, uh, you know uh, whatever spare inverter replacement etc et so there is some amount of um, education that is required awareness that is required and they have to understand that they are also part of this they are beneficiaries of this it's not about cost uh, it's not just about the price that we are talking about there is so much more to it and uh, uh, once they come out of that little initial uh, conversation about price matlab how much in fact i remember ritu mentioning a couple of days ago ki kitne mein milega uh, mileage versus price kind of conversation so uh, that should not be the case and uh, we are doing our best in terms of educating them and they also should realize that uh, there is so much more at stake uh, rather than just a uh, price point uh, so i hope that that's going to come in at some point yeah in fact that's the common feedback that we get from investors you know whenever there is a transaction dialogue going on the question is that how long will these ppas go on and you know tomorrow if uh, storage comes in uh, you know would these ppas continue to get uh, honored uh, vivek maybe you can you can share your thoughts on this because uh, you know you would have been seeing this issue live yeah i think couple of points i'd like to add from uh, the previous discussions on uh, on uh, on government approvals net metering cigs and so on i think first uh, to bulk of uh, the participants here i i do want to put it in context that probably if you look at the same conversation and probably you know, 6 months back or even a year back to where we are now it's significantly better so i i first want to congratulate good parts of most states and the discoms that they're doing a great job in at least being progressive on that front and i think that's very important to acknowledge we are as ritu said eating away very um, uh, lucrative customers from their point of view or at least they perceive that to be uh, and and there is a debate we can have on that but i think from to the to a large extent almost every state has come out with a policy and of course uh, states like telangana and have been have been uh, doing it for almost 3 years now and today we can do net metering cig cig plus net metering in the state within a month Uh, and 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 that's amazing if you compare it to most other states and what happens around so i think it's a matter of time uh, intent is there or at least it's stated right at the top i think on the ground the resistance more comes from the lack of complete understanding rather than uh, any inherent resistance to rooftop solar it is just lack of understanding what the process will be uh, and and therefore it takes time 
uh, but look at the end of the day um, uh, these uh, it's significantly better than where it was so i i want to put that in context first so that's that's one two i think from a, uh, you talked about the efficiency part as well i i had a comment on that just as a i mean case study there i mean we've done almost 300 branches of icsci uh, in in something like 21 states in india and across all these branches where you have solar systems only for a backup plus priority feed we're talking with the bank for some sort of an energy management system to for them to assess complete consumption by source and complete supply by source and all of this on an app you know stuff like this so all of this are things that customers are very excited about. They want to know more. It's just not about solar power laga diya or kuch cost saving ho gaya. I think they want more now. And uh, and, and they're all, um, they have mandates internally to want to report and talk about how they are being efficient as well, not just smart in terms of their cost management. So uh, I think these are, <clears throat> these are these are all good things. They, it used to take ages to get them to see and understand this, but now the pull is uh, is quite extensive. On your issue of contracts per se and the pricing, look, that pressure will always remain. Uh, and to be fair, again, uh, I, I take life a little philosophically in these aspects. It is because the prices are going down that the market is where it is, right? So we've grown, the rooftop segment grew almost 100% year on year. And so um, I tell bulk of my team that we shouldn't be complaining. Uh, there's a lot to do. And, and, and therefore, look, you have to be competitive. You have to match these prices. From a contractual standpoint, it presents some challenges. But uh, the way I look at it is um, the headroom that the customer is saving on is significant. So if you take a state like Telangana or Maharashtra where your price of industrial power is 7, 8 or even Maharashtra where it is 10, 12 rupees and you, you can give solar power at 4, 4.5 rupees. I think at the end of the day, the customer is not out there to want to default. I think he's going to, if he's out of pocket, uh, and he's up against the wall, he will have a thought or two to do. Uh, he'll want to sit down with you and renegotiate. But if there is another developer who comes and says, listen, I'll give you power at another 50 paise lower, I'm not really sure a customer is going to bother with, given that he's already saving more than 50% in his price of power. So I think it is important that the business case is clear to the customer. If he makes money, you will therefore go ahead and make money. Uh, maybe there needs to be and maybe the conversation should head in that direction i always think rather than the rather than us working on the regulation we need a tighter legal framework uh, that monitors our contracts and you know a quicker resolution if in case we come up against it so if there is something like that i think it would give the entire community the financiers uh, the owners of these projects the customers a lot of comfort so um, i think the legal framework should improve on these contracts rather than uh, rather than the, uh, ra of course, the regulation can keep improving, but bulk of rooftop, or at least most of us on this panel are, bulk of rooftop is a one to one contract between the customer and us. Uh, less than, in our portfolio, less than 15, 20% of our assets have a, a commercial case because of net metering. So the captive consumption is good enough uh, without net metering. Uh, and, and therefore, look, of course it is important, there will be off days, maintenance issues, you want to have net metering and, and so on, but it's not going to, it's not a deal breaker. It's not a deal breaker, essentially. And uh, Setu, since, uh, you know, clean tech is present across countries, how do you see India vis-a-vis uh, -vis some of the other developing markets? I mean, is India exceptionally, uh, I would not want to use the word bad, but it really needs to catch up, or do you think all the developing markets are pretty much on the same page? So, yeah, so in terms of international markets, uh, India is definitely one of the most uh, mature today. So other markets are still trying to figure out uh, their ways when it comes to exporting back to the grid or doing net metering. And even in terms of developing ecosystem in terms of uh, good EPCs or finding the required skill set among people whom you can hire within your company to uh, get these projects built. So that ecosystem is still a big challenge in some of the projects. Sometimes you have to send teams either from India to uh, get these projects executed just because we are not able to find a suitable resource there. So that way is the ecosystem is very, very mature out here, I would say. Uh, in India, but like just to add to uh, Vivek's point, uh, like I would also kind of give a very optimistic picture that uh, like 
couple of years back when I used to go to clients and uh, sell them solar. It was a very difficult uh, pitch because you had to take them through the entire uh, jazz of what solar is and uh, you know how radiation falls and uh, you know how, how power is generated and all that stuff. Now customers come back to us saying that uh, this is uh, what I want, these are the specs that I want and would you be able to offer us this particular tariff. So that way customer is really uh, clear these days on what they exactly need and uh, where uh, you know what, what they can drive out of developers and EPCs. So that way, the market is uh, fairly, fairly mature, I would say. And uh, you know, you you mentioned that India is almost now export exporting capabilities when it comes to uh, uh, you know solar rooftop. Uh, just want to get Shishan's views on you know you must be evaluating a lot of business plans, uh, yes. a lot of companies yes, must do. be approaching you. So are you seeing that India is now becoming a kind of a hub for these activities and increasingly players are looking at capturing the whole Southeast Asia or South Asia market? Absolutely. So um, first of all, with one and a half gigawatts installed, yes, India is a major player in rooftop or distributed generation now. Um, I would like to congratulate the entire uh, industry for that. It was uh, not possible a few years back and uh, this today is a reality. There's no point in comparing uh, it with the rest of the 12 and a half uh, gigawatts of solar because like he said, they are probably apples and oranges, but um, I'd uh, you know, want to uh, bring in a new perspective, a slightly different perspective to this whole um, issue of uh, financing or lending to these projects. Where do banks finance now? So we have about 6,000 billion rupees exposure. Uh, when I say we, I mean the banking sector in PA, right? And uh, out of this, about 16 to 17% is NPA. Uh, we all know another 5 to 10% is going to be M NPA. We don't have a lot of avenues to invest money. And as such, one of the uh, best growth stories and uh, the, the, I, would say, I would say a very um, cogent technology that, that is here to last for the next 25, 30 years, I see solar as something which is here to stay. So from a lender's perspective, solar is definitely uh, a rising uh, sun for India. And I don't think any lender today would or can afford to stay away from this growth story. Um, having said that, there are risks. You uh, touched upon a few risks, um, PPA being one of uh, the, the key risks. Um, uh, it is not the PPA per se, but the enforceability of the contract and uh, whether it will stand the test of time, which is uh, concerning to us as lenders. Um, broadly, what we see in a PPA is whether the tariff tenor is covered, whether the obligations for both the seller and the buyer are well protected. Uh, how strong is the termination? It can be an NPV, it can be anything else. And uh, whether the PP itself can be assigned to someone else. So that is one aspect that I really want to touch on. And I think all developers should really um, look at it critically because a PPA uh, here is way more than just a document and it is really the backbone of the entire project. Um, that's one. Um, also, I want to touch upon the cost. So I was reading in uh, one of uh, uh, the articles, I think, by Anand himself, um, that the cost of rooftop or the cost of uh, one kilowatt power is about 70,000 rupees. Now, um, let's bring some perspective to this. So one kilowatt power is uh, 1,000 watts, right? So we're talking about uh, a 100 watt lamp or a 100 watt bulb being, being lit for like 10 hours. Uh, bring in capacity utilization to it and it goes below that. So would you want to pay 70,000 rupees for a bulb which is uh, lit for 10 hours at your place. And uh, let's say, let, let's assume it will go on for perpetuity. So I want, I want to leave the audience with a thought uh, that whereas 70,000 is a number that can um, definitely go down in the near future. Uh, does 2.44 really make sense? Is that a number which can sustain the test of time again? So um, I, I don't want to compare uh, the conventional or the on-grid and the rooftop, but um, the, the mind brings you to these comparisons and uh, I think I think there are some corrections that we will see in the sector going forward. Yeah, in fact, I tend to agree with what you say on the tariffs because see, India has seen a similar trajectory on thermal where the projects are very aggressively bid for and then 
uh, you know, we stand where we stand today on the thermal, uh, where there are huge write-offs being taken. A similar story panned out in highways where, uh, you know, after NH NHAI came out with the Golden Quadrilateral Program, there were very aggressive bids made and today there is a lot of distress in highway space. And we would not want solar to, solar to have the same fate. Uh, now, the interesting thing is that, uh, you know, when the bids were made at 5 rupees, uh, the market felt that, oh, that's a very aggressive bid and today those projects are in the money. The bids were made at uh, 424 rupees, they were in the money. The bids were made at 315, today they are in the money. So I think solar sector has had a very good uh, fortune uh, because con consistently the capital costs have been coming down, financing costs have been coming down, the rupee kept becoming stronger. So so I think uh, it's, it's a whole lot of good events that have uh, you know come together to ensure that all the aggressive bids in the past uh, have not become unviable, but someday the cycle is going to stop. Uh, and, and you know, nobody wants their project to be that project when the cycle stops. So, so I agree with you that that 2.44 needs to be, uh, uh, you know, reviewed and uh, thought over. Yes, please. So I just had a point to make on that one. So completely agree that uh, project costs have been coming down over the years and uh, definitely uh, rupee is getting stronger. And uh, that has a major impact on uh, driving down the tariffs. But at the same time, uh, not th th there's something that not many people are uh, mentioning, and that is the ecosystem that the government has provided, right? So in terms of so in a lot of projects, the transmission system and the evacuation network is taken care of. Government is giving a lot of assurances in terms of uh, uh, power buyback and things like that. So I think we should also try and put a number to these kind of incentives. So it's not just about subsidy or viability gap funding, but these kind of in incentives that are also helping uh, these prices to go down. And once you, uh, you know, add these incentives to these tariffs, along with the capacity utilization factor, for example, in Reva, let's say the utilization factor was lower as compared to the recent Bhatla parks. And that is also one of the reasons why these prices went down. So I think th then we would be able to see a much better picture of what, where we really are. Yes, I, I tend to agree and uh, you know there are a lot of initiatives like the green corridor or uh, you know making the policy stronger in terms of uh, you know exerting the right pressure on the utilities to uh, evacuate power I think all of those uh, will help of course there is uh, an unnerving uh, thing about reopening PPAs and I don't know <laughs> what is your view on that but uh, you know if the government itself sets a precedence sorry please yes uh, so yeah if the government sets itself a precedence of reopening PPAs then it just makes uh, uh, you know distributed generation even more uh, open to such kind of risks. Um, so, see, uh, just to do a quick uh, contrast between uh, how solar is panning out now and say five seven years back, you know how wind was doing when wind was completely on the upsurge before 2012. Uh, we have some uh, our company has experience in wind and we were a part of that that journey. Uh, what has happened is that. Uh, it's only now that you are having the so-called reverse bidding happening in wind. Almost for 10 years, wind had a free runway with respect to FIT. And that is the reason you have seen a surge from say a zero to almost 24, 28,000, you know, gigawatt. Both uh, uh, retail investors, whom we call the AD investors, as well as the IPP stepped in and they have, you know, uh, kind of uh, put that number. It's only now when the industry has matured, technology has matured, uh, people are aware about the various technical, regulatory and commercial risk they have factored in and they're able to do it. That's why you see a lot more stability, uh, you know, kind of there. Solar, I think uh, you, you can take it either way. The good thing is that uh, generally people perceive that the entry barriers are very low. That's why you'll be seeing that, you know, hundreds and hundreds of companies are getting into it at least tens of companies are getting onto the developer side because at least on the rooftop the ticket sizes are low and you know people can make a dash for it whether you are a financier whether you are from an electrical background whether you are from an energy efficiency background or you are from an architectural or a civil background you feel you can do something there and people are actually you know putting up companies and they're doing it so the good thing is yes the, the consumers are getting uh, low cost the government is getting low cost uh, I know we all, uh, uh, as a part of solar, we talk about the low tariffs, but the fact is we ourselves have bid those tariffs and it's not like one person who's like a misnomer. You see the L2, L3, L4, there's not a huge gap. You know, there's not a huge gap. I mean, look at the Seki bids, which have just come out a couple of days back. And if you look at those capexes, you know, people are you know, trying to be extremely aggressive. 
so the, so the point is it's good for the consumer but at the same time i feel before the market is maturing and people are able to actually practically understand what are the risks involved so there are multiple things the asset being a going concern for 25 years the ppa going being a going concern for 25 years how the government is going to behave because yes as vivek is mentioning you are picking up their uh, top creamy customers and the viability of discom is also a reality because we, we can't wish away discom we can't wish away thermal in a in a country like uh, india so these are the various factors which is you know uh, 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 playing the role and i believe that's why you know you're having the pressure on tariffs but again the proof of the pudding is that let's see how many of these projects actually get financed and come on ground like many times uh, people like british india say that the ratio is 30 40% now coming to the fact that government trying to renege on the ppa or trying to arm twist so not on the solar side but uh, on the large Uh, so sorry on the large ipp side and the wind side yes many of our uh, clients uh, and m developers have you know kind of faced it but the fact is legally it is it is not possible the, you can have murmurs about it you ha- you saw gujarat doing that you heard something uh, in up you know hearing something in telangana there are murmurs about it but i think legally it's very very uh, uh, difficult for government to go back on the people because it's there's a some amount of sovereignty in, involved there but thinking from their perspective definitely the bureaucrats also would be having tremendous pressure that say three quarters back if they if the power was at around fourish two quarters back it was around th- at threeish and within a, uh, another quarter it's coming to 2.5 so they have the pressure that is there something that they're missing out because the speed with which the i won't say technology but the pricing is moving around in solar it is definitely giving nightmares even to the bureaucrats and to the policy makers that what is right what is wrong so i think that is the pressure that everybody is seeing even today people don't know some people say that it will go down even further if you see what has happened in middle east and abu dhabi i think 4 dollars cents you know was the uh, tariff there so that uncertainty is what i think is uh, a little bit uncert- unsettling no i think that's a very valid point with uh, you mentioned about interactions with regulators what do you uh, how do you see regulators behaving to this i mean are they taking a pragmatic view or is it just that the intention is to only keep driving the tariffs down 